why does it has to be so complicated? I have a very simple task. I just want to send my video file from the iPhone to the Windows machine. And I cannot use the AirDrop, but this... No, wait. My computer doesn't have this socket, so what kind of options do I even have? And don't tell me that you were never in this situation when you have an iPhone, maybe some Android phone, you have a Windows workstation, you have a Mac, and you want to transfer some large files between all of those systems. That's exactly my case, because I record all of my videos on the iPhone, which is also recording right now, and I edit all of the videos on my Windows workstation. So I have to move those files from my mobile phone to the Windows some how using USB cable as you already saw it's pretty a nightmare and doesn't always work it's very complicated to find a file it sometimes just doesn't work for me using the cloud to upload it like Dropbox um, OneDrive whatever first of all you're limited on a uh, disk space and the second thing is internet speed right now i am still sitting on a 5g internet so uploading it somewhere to download from the computer that is next to you would basically mean like minus one day from life of my editing and stuff like that and the answer is very simple it turned out it's the local send it is an open source app which basically behaves just like an airdrop but the difference it is not restricted to the apple products it also works on Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, Mac, whatever. All of those platforms you can easily send um, the files no matter the size from one to another. Important thing, as I said, it's open source, so it's absolutely free. And you can also go to the community, you can go to the Discord, see the issues, some pull requests, and basically see all the source code of the app itself. You can go through the documentation and, and find everything you need. As I said, it's supported on all of the platforms and there's many different ways how you can install it. We'll talk about this a little bit later. And uh, it's also secure. Like it doesn't require an internet connection. You just have to, you must have your devices in the same network. My iPhone is just connected in the same Wi-Fi as uh, in the same Wi-Fi internet connection as my uh, workstation so I can just send the files through this uh, connection without using the internet but still when you're transmitting all the files whenever you start a connection it's automatically ge generates the TLS certificate so all of the communication between the devices is secured and uh, nobody will spoof your data installation is straightforward you just go to the local send.org click on a download button and choose the platform on which you want to install it may it be Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android or iOS. For Windows you can choose also a different types of installation. You can go with executable file, with MSI, you can just get a portable zip and all releases so you can install it through the WinGet, Choco, Scoop Bucket, whatever I've never used it but what I'm trying to say is that there are very many ways of how you can install it. Installation itself is also straightforward it's just as it usually is on a windows next 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 finish and as a result you get this app which is called local send with basically just three options that you can use first is the mode receive when i have this app opened it means that i can send the files from my iPhone or whatever that is in the same um, connection. I will show it in the background. Or I can use a send if I want to send something. So if right now on my network, some device would have uh, been connected and local send open, then I would see it here and I would be able to send it. And also the settings and all defaults are absolutely fine. Like you normally don't need to change anything. Um, the only thing that you might want to change if you have multiple devices, like when Whenever you first time start your local send app, it automatically generates the name. Like for me, it is the gorgeous lettuce. So if let's say you have many phones and many computers and desktops and whatever, uh, gorgeous lettuce might not be the self-explaining. So you can go to the setting, uh, settings, find it here change the name as you wish, restart the application, and it will be the one that you set. Installation on your mobile phone is also straightforward, like you can go um, to the local send.org and iOS and you can see that it is also available on the App Store. So the only thing that you have to do is open your App Store on iPhone, uh, type in local send, type in install, and uh, 
very similar as on Windows. You don't need to do any configuration. The app will be usable right after you download from the App Store. And the only thing that you need to make sure is that, again, both of your devices are in the same network. And my personal feedback is that I myself been using this app for not too long, but also not a couple of days, something around like five or six months, because as I said, I had a personal trouble trouble when I need to send the files from my iPhone to the Windows workstation. And I've tried a couple of different solutions that basically promised to have the same result, but the local send worked perfectly fine. Since then, the only thing that I've noticed myself is like, I also sometimes want to shoot videos in a cinematic mode on the iPhone. But the thing is that video file is not ready out of the box to be sent somewhere. And it's not a local send specific. Just if you want to send a cinematic video from your iPhone, first of all, you need to like render it to the proper video file and only then send, which means that in the local send, when you try to choose the files, um, you will not see the uh, cinematic videos, which means that you have to save them as a video files, which takes a bit of time depending on the video size and the file size uh, to render it as a regular video. And then you can use the local send to send it. But in general, as I said, I'm using it myself. I don't use it on a Linux on a Linux. I don't use it on my MacBook. Uh, the only place is iPhone and a Windows workstation, but it works perfectly fine. And when right now I will click the stop, I will also grab my iPhone and send over over all the video files that we just created to my Windows so that we can start editing.